Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters of Starlight interview series. Today we are having tea. I've got my little mug of tea which has gone a bit cold. We are having tea with Jenny Johnson. Now I have been editing down this interview because we spoke for about three hours. I've got my Wacom graphics tablet pen here. We spoke on the 15th of October for about three hours. This is what Jenny and I do. We will schedule in a little Zoom session and we end up just talking and talking and talking. Now this one we thought why don't we just record it you know and um, share it with the world. Jenny is now who is Jenny Johnson? All right Jenny is someone that I met in about I think it was 2016 we were both attending a course that was all about psychotherapeutic techniques, counseling, coaching, all the stuff that you know we love and are into here on the VLC channel. Uh, there was no astrology as part of the coursework. It really was just kind of, it was directed towards counselors and therapists and that kind of thing helping with all that sort of stuff. So we met at that course in 2016, became friends. And then in 2018, I started this YouTube channel and she is one of the first three subscribers. Now you've met John Unal. John Unal, I did an interview with him. Today you're gonna have an interview with Jenny Johnson. And in the future, I am working on getting the third subscriber to come on and yes, have an interview with her because she's got amazing wisdom too. But here we are today with Jenny Johnson. Now she's one of the original three subscribers of the channel and she has been massively supportive to me over the last few years when it comes to me building my practice and building the channel. She has offered me invaluable advice, guidance, support. She has kept me going when I've been down. She has encouraged me that, you know, come on, you've got this, keep going. You're doing really good work in the world and all that kind of stuff that, you know, every now and then it's really good to hear because it does keep you going. And yeah, not only that though, I have definitely taken some of my business queries to her and Jenny has helped me specifically with things like figuring out my pricing structure, figuring out my week schedule and how I should do my sessions. I'll give you an example. There was a day workshop where you know I, I took my business and it was you know for, for sort of young entrepreneurs, I'm not young but like young business as in small business um, but like you can take your tiny little business to this workshop and they look at it and they tell you all right well here's what you can do to improve it and I went to this workshop anyway the lady there she said to me you need to be doing 20 sessions per week and I just thought what like there is no way that I could physically do 20 in a week and I've discovered through experience and through practice um, and also it's been great to chat with Jenny about this you know I mean I've discovered that I can do about two in a day max like otherwise the quality of the reading is going to suffer so things like that when I've worked through those things with Jenny she has been amazing at confirming my intuition but also sharing with me you know what her clients are going through and how they're structuring their stuff and that yeah two per day is not only very normal but it's it's very good you know you don't want to be uh, pushing yourself too much especially if the quality is going to suffer but things like that it's been great to work through with her she's been really really amazing at helping guide me and helping me to grow my little practice and what I'm doing in a way that's comfortable for me. It's not just business type stuff that you can take to Jenny as well. Basically, if it's emotional, if it's to do with your love life, if it's whatever it is, you know, she has got so much wisdom and a real knack for being able to step back, look 
at the entire situation uh, and figure out what is a comfortable path forward for you. Absolutely amazing. So I'm so excited to share this interview with you. Uh, as I said before, it's three hours condensed to about 50 minutes. Towards the end, we ended up drawing cards, you know, and predicting stuff for the future. And I have not been able to keep that in here because what I thought we'd do is at the beginning, just get to know Jenny. And what I'll do is I'll invite her to come back on and we can do all that kind of thing. If you have a question for her um, in the comments below, you can definitely you know, let us know. The other thing is please do check out her website. It's absolutely brilliant and she is available for bookings. So definitely, definitely I strongly recommend check out her offerings. They are absolutely brilliant and I hope you enjoy this interview. This, these two eclipses here feels like, you know, yeah, it's asking for our immediate attention on certain things now, but now is the time. Yeah. We have an amazing tolerance for discomfort. Yes. Yeah. Really and it's not until something becomes really incredibly uncomfortable. Yes. Push to make that change. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's one of the things that is is happening yeah. now. I, it feels like the energy of 2024 is coming in. Yes. We've got the energy of this eclipse going on. Yeah. We've got so much going on in the world, so much going on probably in our in our own lives. Yeah. But it's it's a time to start prioritizing. What yeah. is it we want to do? What do we want to change? What are our own priorities? Who am I now? Mm -hmm. who, who I am now is very different to who I was five, ten years ago. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. I've changed so much. Yeah, huge shifts, yeah. huge shifts go on. And the world has changed. And I think that's since COVID and those kinds of things, the world has changed immeasurably, especially in the world of work. Yes. And lots of people are being drawn to work in a different way. Yeah. And to so see there are different options now, completely yeah. different options. Yeah. You know, I was in corporate for a very long time, 25 odd years. Yeah. Um, I survived it barely, but... <laughs> but I was there for a long time. Yeah. But it's taken me since I left that behind, which is seven, eight years ago now, mm. it's taken me a long time to work out who I really am now. Yeah. And I'm still doing that and I will continue yeah. to do that. Yeah. Because as my own journey with work, career changes, yeah. I'm changing with it and different yeah. options appear and I align differently. Yeah. And because I like to do my spiritual work, I'm changing all the time. So yeah. what worked for me a year ago might not work for me now. Yeah. Might not work in the same way. So that question of who am I goes across everything. Who am I at work? Who am I with my friends? Yeah. My closest relationships, everything spiritually. Yeah. It's a big question. It's massive. And that that's a massive piece of work that you've and I've seen you successfully do this go like leave corporate and now establish this wonderful coaching practice that is ever evolving ever growing you know and you're on it all the time and enjoying it and creating a career path that you love that suits you that fits with who you are and who you are becoming because like it, it's amazing to me how we're able to you know put in a 12-hour day for somebody else but then when it comes to like me working that hard for me how come that doesn't happen you know or like why and, and and what I've seen is that me being on this path all my stuff came up and it's like oh I have to deal with all this banked up stuff that I never dealt with before and I've been clearing the path clearing the path and I feel like I'm getting freer and I feel like I'm getting more productive and more able on my own path but yeah I'd love to hear some of your thoughts and insights on this journey and how you know and how, how it's been for you how it's been for clients you've worked with and yeah this this transition <laughs> this is huge this is like there's a lot there's a lot here but yeah. it's it's something that right now 
is top of my list. This is something that I, I really love to delve into because it's something that held me back for such a long time when I left corporate. I had this marvellous plan of what I was going to do, how I was going to coach, who I was going to coach, how marvellous it would all be. And it was all going to be done in, you know, six months or something like that. Well, spoiler alert, it wasn't all done in six months, because what I'm realising now, and we are talking seven, eight years down the line, is that it's very easy to plan and say, what I will do is I will become a coach, I will work in this way, I will use these systems, I will build a marvellous funnel, I'll have a sales page, uh, these clients will be magnetically attracted to me, and before you know it, I will be a superstar in the coaching world. Yeah, We've all got that story in some form. Yeah, you know, if, if you're interested in, in building your own business, you've got some of that in there. Yeah. And... I wasted huge amounts of time and effort and money mm. paying for courses, paying for workshops, you know, going away and having marvellous retreats. I had a wonderful time. Mm. But every time I did these things, I wasn't really getting any closer with my business. I would say for the first three years, probably, yeah. I was muddling through yeah. the universe was supporting me it must have been because there was no clear plan there let me yeah. tell you mm. I was trying and it was oh I'll try with this person's doing this I'll do that uh, or someone over here says oh videos are the next big thing let's do videos so we jump on that bandwagon yeah and the problem was that none of that was really aligned with me yeah and I hadn't done the fundamental basic job of working out who I am and this is the thing that I I work with mostly with my clients now yeah whether they're starting a business they've just got a little idea of what they want to do for business or whether there's some you know some way down the road if you don't know who you are in your business your business can never expand to the potential that it has yeah. Because you have to clear it out and shed so many different things that don't align with that business. Yeah. And, you know, just to keep this focused, mm. if you're if you're starting out with a new business now, I've I've lost count of the amount of uh, adverts and things that I see that are, you know, have a 10K month, like six figures in oh, seven right. days, all of this stuff. Well, I tried yeah. all of that. It didn't work. Yes, yeah. price. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now I found something that does, and that is you can only hold in your vibration what matches. Right. So you can only hold so much of a money vibration. I use that because it's the easiest yeah. one people can relate to. So good. And we spoke about that in our last call and I loved it. That conversation, the insights from there are still with me. Yeah, I'm loving this This going down this pathway of what can your vibration hold so yeah exactly and you have to expand it gently over time because yeah. you know you can't the analogy I love this analogy I heard it somewhere I don't know who said it but I will use it mm. we think um okay I stopped work yesterday I'm having today off and then I'll like recover from 25 years of corporate trauma in 24 hours and then within the next seven days, I'm bound to have a six-figure business. Yeah. <laughs> that's now, if I could promise that. Yeah. How come it doesn't work that way? Well. <laughs> You're going to have to troubleshoot this whole thing in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get going. Let's not waste a moment. Yeah. So what, what tends to happen is that people rush into doing something, as I did. You start investing money in something, um, gathering information. And trying to set up your systems and, and do things and, you know, get everything done so yeah. I can go and be this marvellous coach and go and be of great service to people. Yeah. But because it doesn't happen instantly, mm. brain gets a bit bored with that because it's, oh, well, why isn't this happening? So the analogy that I heard that I love is it's like if I say to you, I'm going on a new fitness regime, but, you know, I worked out for an hour this morning. I looked in the mirror and I don't look any different. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, no, because you have to work on it because you're on a you're 
discovering who you are yeah. you're discovering what you can do yeah. and you're aligning yourself to a completely different vibration to where you have been in the past exactly it's the total unknown and that's one of been one of my challenges because I yeah I I don't particularly know I I have role models I have people around me but not quite no and not not immediately around me not anybody I can call by name yeah so yeah that's where it's scary and interesting because it's the total unknown I don't know what I'm doing and in astrology we have the you know that's our Rahu house that's where we have to go the north node we're we're unfamiliar there we need to be there and, and that's where we'll make spiritual progress this time around so yeah this yeah. is the right so that, that whole who am i thing and the identity thing yeah is huge because it's shifting all of the time and one of the things that lies behind that that's very scary for our conditioned selves mm. is that you get to choose you get to choose who you're going to become yes which sounds like a really simple thing well I'll just make a decision I'll choose to be it and it will happen but actually choosing it and then aligning with that energy takes time yeah and it takes effort but you have to approach the identity piece from who do I need to become to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve, whether that's a new business, whether that's a new you in your love life, whatever Mm. it is, who do I need to become? And if you don't have that piece in first, it's really hard for the rest of it to follow because your energy becomes out of alignment because you get stuck in doing. Yes. Yes. All the energy goes into doing and it, some of that can be kind of, some of it's productive, but some of it can be busy work. Some of it can be like, you know, um, thinking that, okay, well, I've got to put out three videos a week and, you know, but then, and when I've had that routine down, but it, it, it sometimes that doesn't, do what I was hoping it'd do, you know, and and so yeah, it's it. You're right. The the growth is internal, and it has nothing to do with, you know, um, external stuff. The external will follow once you get the internal stuff right. Excellent. Yes, that's it. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, that is exactly it. Yeah. If you if you can find that balance and that alignment, yeah. then then you can start answering the bigger questions about what, taking back your power yeah. and how you how do you do that? Yeah. But when you're talking to me, yeah. that taking back of your power is about rebalancing who you are. So you know who you are. Your identity is very clear. Yeah. You don't have to be you know going out trying to be a saint but you have to be your true authentic self yeah and you have to be making decisions that align with what you believe not what you've been carrying that says you believe this particular thing yes you've gone through that exploration phase that shedding to work out okay here's a particular value or a belief or a behavior or habit does this still work for me yeah and if it doesn't let it go yes and let it become whatever it needs to be let the energy change into something else yeah it takes time and effort to do that yeah yeah i was being called to look at the balance between the divine masculine and the divine feminine and straight away my system was "Mm, you're not going there yeah yeah (laughs) it's not for you don't do that but my understanding of it changed because I was thinking okay I'm getting images of people in a sunlit meadow and they're in their tie-dye gear and they're all (laughs) wafting around being I'm divine masculine and feminine it is absolutely nothing to do with that (laughs) and I was so happy I was like I don't have to do any of that for me my divine feminine and divine masculine if I bring it down to the basics Mm. One is being and one is doing. Yes. So when I was in corporate, 
Divine Masculine was having an absolute ball. Yeah. Loving it. You know, the framework, the setup, I was on a management team where I was the only woman. Um, and uh yeah. Wow, you you were the queen bee. <laughs> <laughs> mm, kind of, but that bought its own uh, that that's a very long story. That's another Maybe they, yeah. <laughs> that's another interview entirely. Yeah. But my divine masculine was on top it was doing everything because it needed to be for me to survive i adapted to just really being in the divine masculine yeah. to the point that and i th i think this was probably the point where i thought maybe i need to make a change here my boss said to me i like the way you think you think like a man and i was oh. horrified absolutely wow. horrified i was like oh, no this is not that yeah. i don't want to be you know this what's yeah. what's happening here is toxic i'm not enjoying this i don't yeah. want that to be me yeah so there was no way i was going to leave that and then in a short amount of you know a matter of months suddenly become a coach who was balanced and aligned and ready to do the things yeah. that i really really wanted to do but all that time i was pushing away my divine feminine Yes. which was my creativity my intuition mm -hmm. my being yeah because I thought it was something that I was absolutely in no way aligned to thinking I'm not becoming you know this floaty woman in a dress yeah putting incense around and yeah. what have you now I'm quite happy to have a bit of incense don't get me wrong the dress yeah. no nope, I'm not there yeah <laughs> but once I realized that my divine feminine shows up as being, and actually when I'm writing, I love to write, mm. that's when she comes through. And now I've embraced her, I can get those two in balance. Yes. When they're in balance, I'm in flow mm. and I'm in power because I've stepped into my own leadership because I'm using both. Yes. Sometimes you have to up the ante on one or the other, but yeah. generally you know, I was like here and here, this was my masculine and feminine yeah. was, feminine was way down. could barely see her. She didn't get a look in. Yeah. So that was that was my biggest takeaway wow. from that time was, you know, find out who you are and find out what things mean to you. Somebody, you know, somebody else's idea of divine masculine and feminine will be yeah. completely different because yes. they're working in a different way. But honor them. Honor yes. the fact that you have these two parts. They are both there they are both equally valuable yes. and when you put them together you can create marvelous things but if the masculine is doing all the time what's it doing for if it's building a system what's the system for yeah, yeah. <laughs> building it because you can yes do with it yeah so much of the world yeah masculine energy they're doing yeah why like you know and when i look at things like all the increased surveillance and control and all that stuff and it's like why okay you can read all my emails and okay what are you going to do with it like why what purpose is all this i'm so sorry for you if you really really want to read my emails i do <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. yeah have find something better to do yeah. with your time <laughs> yeah exactly yeah the the masculine that's gone overdrive is just like wow what yeah why yeah. yeah i think when when you feed it too much because yeah. we're we're conditioned into it we're very much you know i know i'm the youngest of three daughters and i was pushed mm -hmm. to live my life a certain way so mm -hmm. when i went into my corporate job and there were promotions and it was like oh oh yes this is marvelous look how well you're doing yeah. and yet on the inside i was dying absolutely dying yeah Hate I, I was high functioning I could do my job and I did it very well yes because I went into complete survival but it was burning me out on the inside yeah wow the cost is high yeah, yeah. and it's like and it's not an achievement to be able to sometimes when we're proving things to other people that you know, oh, yeah, I can I can shrink myself into nothing or like, yeah, and we have to shrink our feminine side to nothing, you know, and, and yeah, like it's kind of, that that's when we stop and think about it. It's like, well, hang on a minute. That's not an achievement at all. No, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I remember when I was going into the office, um, we used to have management with here yeah. and people who did the work were over yeah. here. Yeah. But I would always go and sit over with the people who did the work because I knew them and I would engage with my feminine. Yes. Looking back on it now, I realised what was happening. Yeah. I had great relationships with those people. So if there was something they wanted to bring to management, they would bring it my way and then I would take it right deliver it in a particular way. Okay. So you've got your you're... chart here and I can see that. You've got Venus, <laughs> Venus in Aquarius. Yeah, you got Venus in Aquarius in the third house. I do think that's one of the elements there that is bringing um you would sit with the team. Yeah. Even though you've got a top level absolutely, you know, you're one of the I guess in England they call it the top brass or something, don't they? Like even though you're one of them, you will be with the people. I was exactly. much more comfortable there. Much more comfortable because it felt more balanced. Yeah. It really, really did. And that was the thing that I think kept me going because I didn't stay in my corporate job because I liked it. I stayed because I wanted to help the people that were there. You know, yeah. I liked being with them. Yes. I would, you know, and it was, you know, you would get there, get to your desk at seven in the morning and leave if you were lucky, seven at night yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah. And there were times, I have to search for them, but there were times where I had a lot of fun with those people. Yes, yes. And those little things kept me going for much longer than if I hadn't have had those because things would have shifted a lot sooner, I think. But one of the things I was particularly proud of was that when I, it took me three years to leave, okay? Mm. I planned my way out of corporate. From the decision, from the time you decided, I'm not going to be here anymore. And at that moment, did you know that you were going to be a coach? No, I just knew I'd my capacity for being uncomfortable had been expanding. Yeah. I can be a little bit more uncomfortable and a little bit more and a little bit. And then it was like, I I this is my limit I really cannot take any more I can't expand anymore I can't absorb this and I can't carry it anymore mm. so when we were talking earlier about yeah. the vibration your vibration can carry and yeah. what you can carry so it works both ways it's not only about what can I think we use money you know what can I carry mm. money wise. it's also about what you can carry within you so yeah. so many females in particular burnout because we are we're programmed to overgive we're programmed to you know keep going keep going keep going your security you're this you're that you know um you need the car the house the watch yeah. the husband the 2.4 kids yeah. a dog if you can get one and make yeah. sure it's the right kind of dog <laughs> you know all of these things it's like yeah. i don't want any of this that like you want me to have this yes i don't i when i take a moment to think about it I don't want any of that yes yes yeah. what do I want and that that was what got me onto well who am I yeah, but you deliberately chose consciously chose uh that no I want to design my life on my terms isn't it I mean it's a, a whole different way of being it is and it's looking back on it now I think if I hadn't have chosen then, you know, mm -hmm. I chose who I who I become. Yeah. If I hadn't done it then, I think the universe would have done exactly what it did to you and yeah. it would conspire to make you come out of yeah. that environment. Yeah. yeah. Because um <laughs> I've just remembered this. So I left work in the April. Mm. Um, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to have a month off. It's going to be amazing. Took the month off. It went by ever so quickly. Then before I knew it, I found myself applying for a job that was 10 minutes down the road. That was almost a complete carbon copy of what I had just left. Um, I went to the interview. I was offered the job. Mm. And then I just said, "My, I don't know what happened. I literally, I got the email that said, we'd like to offer you this position. And everything in my body dropped. It just, everything just went dunk. The energy fell out the floor. And I just wrote back and said, 
now I do remember this because I was like, oh, went into complete meltdown. What am I going to write? I'm going to have to tell them I can't do this job. What am I going to do? Oh, they wasted all that time with me. Complete nonsense. Yeah. I just wrote back and said, oh, I've been offered another job because that was what felt good. I wouldn't do that now, but that's yeah. how it felt. I had to explain it. I had to give it a different kind of spin. So yes. I'm like, oh, sorry, I've been offered another job and blah, blah, blah. And I felt dreadful for two weeks after that. Yeah. Absolutely dreadful yeah so I had you know I'd done the most despicable thing ever yeah by not taking a job that I really didn't want and I really shouldn't have yeah exactly oh no I know the old conditioning would have been like oh like what's going was, on it was absolutely frantic yeah frantic. and it, the, what's interesting as well here is again Venus is coming up because like so now feminine energy one of the things I've learned through studying the planets is that um, Venus, her power is in saying no. That's her great power. It's what she says no to that brings her up. And that is the main creative power, I do believe. One of the main creative powers of feminine energy is that you say no. It's really interesting that when you said no, it wasn't that Venusian just no. It wasn't just a pure, plain no. It was a, yeah, it was a, oh, let's find an excuse. Like, yeah, which I did, well, me too, all my life. Like, you know, it's like getting a note from your parent or I guess it starts then. Like it starts young, you know, it starts with like the excuses. It's I'm sick. Uh, I got this other job. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it was so uncomfortable, but the power of no now I'm very different with the way I say no yeah. now I just say no thank you and I yeah. don't explain it yeah and I look at that and often if someone says I'm naturally a hermit so if someone says come out if you yeah. ask me to come out next week today I'll be all happy about it come next week I'll be like oh no I really don't want to go out <laughs> so now I just say no thank you mm -hmm. so rather than have to say no thank you because you know, I, oh, I'm working or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Just it will just be an, a no thank you. Yeah. And it works because, you know, like, oh, or, you know, if I am working, sorry, I'm not even sorry. I'm working. Mm. I've become very mindful about mm. language. Yes. And when I say sorry. And if I am sorry, because we often use sorry. Mm when actually that's not the energy that we mean to bring with us yeah. one of the easiest ways to explain what i'm talking about is if somebody is late yeah oh i'm so sorry i'm late yeah yeah i don't say that anymore what i do is i turn up and i go thank you so much for waiting for me ah there we go yes yeah. and it values the 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 fact that someone has been waiting for you but that something else was happening and now you're available you're here yes that's been a massive game changer when it comes to clients who I work with what I expect from them what they expect from me yeah, brilliant and when you choose who you are and how you react to things and you start actually putting them into practice which is scary when you first start doing it but then you realize oh, okay I did that and yeah the world is still here hasn't ended <laughs> But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. But you have to start. You have to take the action. So if you think of the idea of, I would like to change things. I would like to investigate who am I going to become, divine feminine. Yeah. Then you switch it into the divine masculine when you're taking the action, when you're mm -hmm. responding in a particular way. That's mm -hmm. the doing of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those things, it's everywhere yeah. in everything that you do. The divine masculine, but then the doing of it in a divine feminine way. What do you mean there? How the doing it, the doing of it in the divine feminine is realizing that you have the choice of who I am. Right. Realize so I I can ask the question, who do I need to become to uh open a new business? Mm, really the feminine successful. energy. Feminine when where we actually stop and consider and we think and we yes and that is time there's something luxurious about this like 
yeah it's um well it's luxurious from a masculine point of view yeah Yeah. (laughs) because it's that it's actually taking that pause yeah to a moment where you're connecting maybe with higher self imagination whatever you connect to that says you do know you can choose who you want to become don't you and you're like what (laughs) Yeah. so that's feminine and then the masculine yeah. will help you do it so in a business the divine feminine is all the marvelous ideas about how you want to help people and how you'll be when when you're coaching when you're with someone when you're with your clients and your divine masculine will be your systems your boundaries yeah. you know i do not work for free yes. i do not trade my time or my energy this one up because you mentioned that the software is being changed and Mm. one of the thoughts I had with the collective at the moment is that there are interesting forces at play trying to get in and change like the kernel level software you know that launches the operating system or you know everyone's trying to get in and change the very um, core programming of this world at the moment that's another way that I've been seeing the world and yeah I mean since okay so that's happening out there in the macro in the collective but we can get in and change our own core level software and program at the time and better that we're doing it than the television's doing it or the media's doing it or somebody else is doing it we yeah. really want to have hands on. Uh, yes. Exactly. You can choose to do that because we've been, especially with television and social media, yeah. you get fed things. Mm. So I don't engage actively mm. with either of those, particularly the things I like to engage with, I will. Yeah. But I won't. Um, I. <laughs> I'm just chuckling as I remember that my parents would be, you know, you need to watch the news in the evening and then you need to watch it again before you go to bed. Mm. And it just gives you a perspective of what somebody wants you to know information wise. Yeah. So, you know, and that is a choice. If that suits you, fine. I'm not asking you to change that. Absolutely not. You have to go with what feels right for you. But if you prefer not to do that, then you should also have the choice to do that and to take control over what you feed your own operating system so that not everyone gets the same approach. Yeah, We don't want that. It's the same for everybody because it isn't. Yeah. There are some things that will have touching points, of course, but finding your own way to do something is the way to make it stick. Yeah. If you try something and it's worked for a while and then it's kind of dropped off, Mm. it's because you have really found the thing that works for you for you to sustain it consistency is key and it should be easy it shouldn't be a oh I have to do this thing yeah absolutely yeah yeah the journey of creating one's own career path it's a real self-growth self-learning you learn so much about yourself and that's what um Lester Levinson says that because some people think there's a contradiction in spirituality that well if you're a spiritual person you can't build a business or make lots of money some people think that that's not right and Lester Levinson says no no you should go and be successful in the world because that doing that journey will bring up all the blocks that you have and that is your work in the world to clear all those blocks. You actually, yes. so you actually want to go for the success in the world. Like we need to do that. That's important. We do need to do that. And you've hit on something that I'd forgotten was a pet peeve of mine. Ah. Um. So in the world of spirituality, yes, you'll often see it's a gift. It should be free. Well. Mm. first thing it's a gift no Mm. it's not a gift it Mm. is a skill yes everyone can do it like when people say i'm psychically gifted Mm. everyone has a level of psychic ability if you choose to work with it and grow it and do whatever or you can ignore it perfectly fine your choice but it is not a gift 
yeah. it's a skill yeah. so that's and I that just feels really strong with me yeah so I'm sharing it with you but that's one of the things that first of all it devalues something mm. because as to say that it's a gift no attempt, yeah mm. if you say it's a gift a gift is something that is given to you without any attachment or anything else there you go it's a gift yeah it isn't a gift it's something that you work hard on and yeah. that's why it's it's valuable yeah that's why you know it's something that people can and do pay for yes and that's why i do not work for free and i do not trade my time or my effort yes i have done in the past yes. and actually it was the quickest route to resentment i ever found <laughs> <laughs> yes love the um the lottery winners because yeah I've, I've studied lottery winners too and it's like they'll lose it you know after a couple of years because if the consciousness isn't big enough to hold and maintain and grow it there's another story I have on that which is um they took a secret millionaire and I've forgotten her name but she's a excellent a you're just I like know me. it was just the same yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> she had blonde curly hair and a great outfit and, <laughs> and um she was a secret millionaire and they took her away from her environment and they put her in like a really run down old apartment I think it was in East London they gave her 10 pounds and I think it was per week and filming happened over two or three months or something like that so they put this secret millionaire they got her to work in a cafe and she ended up forming all these friendships and it's a wonderful show because at the end of filming they do it for two months or however long um, at the end of filming she then kind of outs herself as a well I'm actually a millionaire and because you were kind to me and you were kind to me I'm going to give you a check for 10,000 20,000 like this they it's a wonderful show and I liked watching this because this lady she gave a talk about it and she said that um they genuinely just give you that 10 pounds per week and it's actually quite difficult to eat your food and do everything on that for a whole week but somehow, and I don't know how she, oh, she did explain how she managed to do this. She said she was working in the cafe and she came up with all these ideas to um, make extra money and do this and do that. And it was entrepreneurial Fine in feminine. the cafe, Fine which feminine. is how she, exactly. And that's how she made the millions in the first place. And she ended up leaving um, that experience. She, she got a sock and that was like a bank account. She would put her spare money in there. She left with a thousand pounds profit. So, I mean, what, that is amazing. And that shows like the habits, like you can put that person anywhere and they've got that millionaire mindset. They've got all the habits in place. They've got the millionaire consciousness. Yeah. It's like strip them of all their stuff and they'll create it again anyway because that's yeah. who they are so like it's really interesting that yeah and you can take somebody who has no money they win the lottery and then within two years they're back to no money so it's a consciousness thing it's not yeah like it's more a consciousness thing than it is a money thing absolutely because you're still coming back who do I need to become so as a lottery winner who do I need to become to increase this and not go back to where I was yeah exactly yes yeah and you got to put in new habits new ideas new yeah that takes a lot of um upgrading that operating system yeah yes yes it it is it's kind of construction type work isn't it and it's like yeah things are being built you've got to keep building yes um, yeah wow yeah, and it's so interesting. I always have these amazing conversations with you. And then, like as I was remembering last week as well, and we were talking about because because and but I need to I need to sit and spend time thinking about these things. Okay. <laughs> I need to and I need to write some notes or something because it's like I remember last time we were talking about if I had lots of money, what would I spend it on? I remember being at a real loss, just going, I don't know. Like yeah what do I want you know and after after I've you know made a few payments and 
cleared a debt and done a bit of this and that I'm like oh yeah what do I what do I want I don't know but yeah. yeah so I got to build really all of that vision. yeah yeah there's you know I don't think a lot of us really sit and think what we do want yeah. we are often very clear on what we don't want yes because that comes more easily because that's more yeah. obvious yeah but I think it is a, a very important part of the process because you have to know what the vision is, what the dream is, what the yeah. aim is, what the goal is, whatever you're calling it. Yeah. You have to know where are you heading? Yeah. And when someone is asked the question, what do you truly want? Quite often the answer is, oh, I, uh, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I probably need some time to think about that. Yeah. And we don't take the time to then go and do it. But mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're heading towards, then you don't know how to get there. Yes, exactly. So how are you going to make these sweeping changes? Yeah. So you, you do need to be very, very clear yeah. on what it is that you actually want when you're thinking about change. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, whether that's a business or a relationship, work, whatever it is. Mm. Because when I left my corporate role, mm. I had this hazy image of, oh, go and be a coach. <laughs> Yeah. it well yeah. the universe needs more than that to yeah. work on yeah and how you get there you know whether you do um you know however you do it vision boards comes to me I don't do vision boards just mm. putting that out there but yeah. I have done in the yeah. past yeah and if that works for you great anything that you can make the vision real anchor it into your system in some mm. way yeah, whether that's talking about it, journaling about it, um, having a screensaver about it, yes. having desktop wallpaper, something on yeah. your phone, yeah. something like that. Um, you have you need things. You need to have clear destinations yeah. for the universe to help you to get there. Yes. So yeah. have that vision of what you want. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is goal setting. I like how earlier you were talking about having a vision mm -hmm. and exploring and see that's my language that's like having a vision and yeah I I'm not I'm not so I don't create hard and fast goals for myself with dates and mm -hmm. fixed features I kind of I tend to be a bit more I want to create the vision me yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah 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 yes me too and I think goals I leave goals now mm. I realize to my divine feminine, actually. Ah. So instead of, I remember being asked to uh, create a business plan. And I was like, yes, I will create a business plan, but it won't be the business plan you think it's going to be because yeah. it isn't about, you know, what's your demographic? How are you going to get your people? Of course, I have all that. That's in my divine masculine area. So I filed that over there. Yeah. I go in for goals from the divine feminine. And right. I start with who do I want to become? Yeah. Because it tells me more and gives me things that I can actually do. Yeah. So it would be, um, you know, first of all, who do I need to become to have a successful business? What change am I being called to make right now, for instance? Um, it could be things like um, what needs to go? Yeah. What things need to go? what new things need to come in you know mm. what do I need to stop doing what do I need to start doing yes. and just having that flow so connecting to source intuition letting it flow through you and letting the energy speak mm. when you first start it's very hard to get out of your head and you start having a conversation about how ridiculous you are and then you get into the divine feminine flow Brilliant. and then yes. that's when it all comes in so you can ask questions like you know how does money work for me so rather mm. than saying I will make ten thousand pounds this month how is money working for me this month yeah how's money working for me for the next quarter the mm. next six months nice. next so it's coming at it from a different angle of just where is my system with regards to money where's the vibration where where is that mm. and allowing it to come from your internal world allowing the answers to come up so um 
thinking about how does money serve me now yeah so you're going into where where is it doing good where could it be doing better what are you liking about yeah. what's coming in what yeah. do you think is blocking what's coming in yeah it's like am i inviting the energy of money even in am i inviting it in am i uh yes my not. attention there <laughs> or not yeah because i've just written the question down how is money working for me and i'm kind of thinking why do i even invite it do i even think about it? i'm like wow no i need to uh spend some time here yeah, yeah. this is important yeah so because so I, I can just be so i can just be so in my astrology books and that's it like the whole week goes into that you know <laughs> absolutely that's okay. a lovely place to be <laughs> it is yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. And we all do it. I mean, if I said to you, right, I want really want you to sit down and do this business plan that's based on a template from a bank. Oh no. As though you want Oh, I just, oh, I just want to crawl under the table. No, oh, not interested. Do that. Well, yeah. surprise, surprise. You know, most people who have who want to do something that's spirituality based are just so turned off by it. It's like, oh, I've just shriveled on the inside and died. Yeah, exactly. So it instantly yeah. just closes everything. Yeah. But if you're going into the, okay, so let's think about money. What is money? You know, not everyone is in, you know, has the same view. If yes. I think of money, you think of money, we think of energy. Yeah. Exactly. Not everyone does that. Yeah. So start yeah. there. What is money to me? What mm. is it? Yeah. And you can do it with anything. You can substitute money for love. What is love to me? Yes. What is my work to me? Yeah. My, if you asked me that back in 2016, it yeah. would be it's my taskmaster. It's yeah. a tyrant. Yes. And I would go from there. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that space, divine feminine will help you. The questions will come and yeah. it will flow. Yeah. And you'll find out so much more about what's really going on outside of your head space yeah so if you're stuck or things aren't shifting or you're coming up against the same problem you know it dies down a little bit and then you're not worried and then it comes back but it's a little bit bigger mm. go into that space that divine feminine space mm. has so much creativity is is not just grabbing a pencil or a paintbrush or any of that creativity for me i don't Draw, I mean, I can draw a bit. I'm not a fabulous artist. I know you'll be surprised to hear that. I am surprised. Not. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I love is music. Now, I don't play any instruments, but I love to listen to music. Mm. So when I'm being creative, my creativity is listening to music because mm. of the effect it has on my body. Yeah. So that it opens up the space so that the divine feminine can come through and can yeah. flow. And I can do, I mean, my music choices are hugely questionable a lot of the time because I like everything. It's very eclectic. Same. Same. I either like a song or I don't. Yeah, and exactly. From classical to yeah. there's a lot of heavy metal that I yeah. like. No, yeah. it's Same. <laughs> I, I'm like, it's very me too. I'm like, yeah, like a bit yeah. of everything. I just like it or I don't. And it's exactly. Like, it's like people, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like your energy. Or oh, maybe your energy isn't for me. I don't think we're a match. And, you so, know, being a coach is a bit like the same deal with music because I'm fascinated by all types of people. As yes. Well. My interest in people is massively broad, and I know yours is too. And, like, yeah, and, and that is such a classic coach, introvert, INFJ thing. We're both INFJs. We are. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's classic kind of um, the variety of life that we like to interact with and observe, and is is, is huge. It's yeah. yeah, people are so fascinating. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I am, I am a people watcher. Yeah, and I can't, I just can't help it. It's just, it's a part of me. Yeah, and they are endlessly fascinating, whether yeah. they're. Big, good bad and different yeah um, one of the things that i i <laughs> i really like to do is to watch documentaries in particular about generally people who aren't very nice people because i'm fascinated by how they get there same same yes i go down those rabbit holes and i i want to know like and sometimes 
you are digging into like the criminal mind or something and it's yes. really not yeah, I know, but yep. it's like but I, <laughs> I want to know what's making you do that like that. what's the build of the I find this so fascinating absolutely yeah. very much enjoyed my time with you thank you very much for inviting me it's been amazing thank you for coming and you're going to be a regular on the show i hope and you know when the universe this is we, we always do this this is how we always part ways the universe will bring <laughs> us together again and it always does yeah, you know yeah. and it's just yeah i i love that we never have to yeah, it's done for us. And I, you know, I think we're, we're, we've come some way on our yin journeys. I think we're doing pretty good with it. Like, I think we are and divine timing, just it, allowing that to happen. Yeah. Yes. We got to allow it. We just allow, we just, you know, yeah. we just trust that when the time is right, the, the next thing will be shown, we'll be doing whatever it is and exactly yeah the next call is the big vision and yeah. then we we get there and it just you do it when it feels right and that's that's what we're talking about so yeah so good brilliant <laughs> all right well till next time <laughs>